testing, testing, one, two. Um, my name is Troy White, Hudu Financial Portfolio Manager. Please like, share this video, and subscribe. Hey, I just did a video and uh, realized I didn't do a video. I did not press the button. <laughs> so uh, I'm not even going to talk about what I just talked about. That was like 30 minutes, too. So, uh, and I was losing enthusiasm about that video anyway, because, uh, just sort of rambling about, uh, investor behavior. Uh, what I want to do is give you some practical information. Um, here are some things that you should do before you start investing. Um, and this is an, uh, I'm assuming that you are doing a solo mission on the investing. You're not working with an investment advisor or financial planner or anything. So fundamentally, what you need to do is financial planning. So you don't you don't have to have a financial planner to work with to do that. So uh, here are some steps to take and some thoughts for you. So first off, before you start investing money, you might consider um paying down some debts so if you have a lot of credit card debt then you need to pay that off as soon as possible and then i'm advocating that you no longer use credit cards period no longer use credit cards for your in your personal life for a business yeah, you could use credit cards, but you need a new pair of shoes. Don't use no credit card for that. You know, you don't need those shoes if you need if you was going to use a credit card for those. So paying down debt is equally important to saving money because your debt has typically has an interest rate attached to it. So your the money that you borrow. Um, usually for some sort of junk like t t tennis shoes or something is actually costing you. So that money costs you and that money is expensive for you because the credit card, credit cards, they charge like 19, 20 and more percent interest. So if you were to borrow that money, just think about that. If you borrow, if you bought a house at that, at that amount of interest, it's ridiculous. You the bill would be so high. And you'll never, never, ever, 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 never, never, never pay that off. So um, paying down debt is vital, uh, vitally important. Also, um, inc increase your investor knowledge. So financial literacy. So you need to watch every financial literacy video that's out there. Um, they're all going to fundamentally give you the same insights but you know you're going to hear it a different way so um find who who you connect with the best in terms of uh the way they deliver information and you know you need a, at least three sources this is one of my rules um of studying and uh things that i'm you know courses and classes and you know degrees no matter what it is that i'm taking a cl class for i need three books on it so now you don't even need a book you could just learn the information on the internet right so if there's a topic that i'm trying to um, learn more about i need at least three different um video presenters on that topic because just the different different people use different words use different analogies and have different you know methods ways they deliver information so i need to hear it those three different ways and i need to hear it a lot so you know you've heard that some you need uh to hear something seven times before it soaks well, I need to hear it 10 times. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, anyway, my point is that improve your financial literacy by watching more videos on 
the financial topics that are of interest to you or of concern for you. So pay down debt, improve your financial literacy, and then budgeting. Now, budgeting, you know, it, you can be very detailed. You, there's plenty of spreadsheets that will help you. Um, there are uh, spreadsheets you can get online and um, even apps that can help you. But I'll tell you the best, most simple way. It's very simple. Just pull out some scratch paper and start writing down everything that all of your mandatory expenses. Write those down first. Then, and included in that, I want you to have your entertainment expenses as well. Um, that's not necessarily a mandatory one, but but you need to have that one down because that one will uh it's kind of tricky you think you don't spend that much but you do uh, on entertainment so uh after you have your mandatory you know your uh your uh non what is it your non discretionary yeah, non-discretionary expenses. I mean, you have no discretion. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay these bills, right? Write all those down, and then your discretionary expenses, expenses that you can pay at your own discretion, right? Me, so basically, write down the the things you have to pay, and then the things you need to pay. You don't have to, but you need to, right? And then the stuff you want to pay. So those those are very different categories. And, and the reason I say that is because there are going to be some items that you're going to have to eliminate throughout your budget because mo most likely you spend more than you make. And most likely, most Americans do that, especially if you have credit cards. So, uh, the budgeting aspect is important. And then number one on your your number one budget item should be pay yourself first, 10 percent. Now, you know, if you're very religious, you might put uh, your tithing first. But I'm going to argue that you need to pay yourself first so that you will be able to tithe. Uh, being a proper steward of the resources that God has given you is what is your responsibility. Being a proper steward of those resources means you need to pay yourself first so that you can continue to have resources. Otherwise, you won't even be able to tie. See what I'm saying? So, so even if you're tithing, pay yourself first 10%. Then you can pay the 10% to Matter of fact, excuse the way I phrased that. I don't even want you to pay your tithes to nobody. If you feel that 10% should go to towards tithing, hey, you should be doing the action. You don't get no special credit, uh, extra credit, because you handed your money over to a priest or a pastor or something. And then what you abdicate your responsibility to them, they're supposed to uh, hand the blessings down, do the right thing with your money. No, it's not what the Bible said. Anyway, that's not my point of this video, but I'm just pointing out to you. Paying yourself first is the first most important thing on your budget. And then everything else goes from there. Now, paying yourself first is how you save and invest. So that in in order for you to have because every person is going to say, I don't have I don't have enough money to invest. Well, through budgeting, you are going to free up 10 percent. I, I didn't say it's going to happen just because you wrote it down, but just because you wrote it down is going to enable you to identify those things that you can X out. You don't have to do this. You don't have to buy Starbucks every day. You don't have to uh, 
buy a soda every day at lunch, you know, and, and on and on, all the little miscellaneous things. Well, let's start over these coming months, especially the new year is coming up over the coming months. Start, see how many things you can eliminate from your budget. And um, those things are going to be replaced by your saving and investing. And then after you uh, are able to pay off some of your debt, you're able to uh, pay yourself first, engage in budgeting. Then what you have to do is uh, you're going to have to excuse me, you're going to have to find a platform to do your investing on for sure. But before you even start the investing process, you're going to need to uh, develop a rainy day fund. A rainy day fund is for emergencies, because if you don't have this emergency fund, this will, it will throw a monkey wrench in your investing. Because what happens is, we'll have some small uh, calamity in our life. You know, your window got bust, you know, your tires got flat, uh, you know, your roof is leaking, you know, you, you need to replace, uh, you know, some appliance in your house. Well, that expense, you if you don't have a rainy day fund, you're not going to have the money for that. So you're going to dip into your investments and Sometimes dipping in your investment means you're going to lose money instead of make money. And that will discourage you from investing in the future. You're going to say, damn, I had this circumstance and I pulled from these investments and that investment wasn't even making no money. And, you know, I should have just saved my, you know, just had to pay, you know, use my credit card or something. You'll come up with some other rationale because your investor behavior uh, will subliminally tell you that you did the wrong thing and that the investing was the bad guy. But it's not. It's the financial planning that you're doing. And, you know, it's the failure to plan. He who pl fails to plan plans to fail. So those are just my tips of the day. Those are four things, right? Uh, 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 what are the four? First off, Financial literacy, got to do that. Second, budgeting. Third, pay yourself first. Fourth, create a rainy day fund. And then fifth, you start investing. Now, actually, when I work with clients, uh, I don't have them build the rainy day fund uh, by itself because we need to we need to kill two birds with one stone. So there are methods and ways that in which we can build your rainy day fund, pay down debt, save and invest all at the same time. And basically you, you come up with the, you figure out how much you can uh, contribute towards your financial planning each month. So if that amount is $100, then I gave you those four categories. Those four categories are where you're going to uh, distribute. Uh, you're going to chop that hundred dollars into, you know, four increments, twenty-five a piece. So, twenty-five for your rainy day fund, uh, twenty-five for your pay yourself first, uh, and we'll call that a retirement account. And then, you know, financial literacy doesn't really cost you anything. And then, um, and planning and budgeting doesn't cost you anything as well. So really your hundred dollars can be divided into two sections, just rainy day fund and investments. And we'll take the $50 on your investment and we'll allocate that in, in depending on your personal circumstance, you can allocate that in, in um, various different ways. But even if you was to just, you know, buy a couple stocks here and there, you know, invest in crypto, do something, invest it in some, some sort of way. But, uh, but those are my tips for you to start off. 
Um, sorry for rambling. Uh, improve your financial literacy. Build your rainy day fund. Pay yourself first, ten percent. And um, what's the other one? Pay yourself first. Financial literacy. Uh, rainy day. And budget. Get your budget under control. Get your budget under control. That is very important. Get your budget under control. Financial literacy. Pay yourself first. Rainy day fund. Uh, if you need my help, uh, I'd love to help you. Uh, shoot me an email, T White at Hoodoo Financial. Um, uh, please like and share this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need my help. Holla at me. Thanks for listening.